blow me up. <laughs> Brother Marshall. Where's the mask? Conduct Brother Clemente, who has been elected to worship mask before the altar. <laughs>
You have been elevated by the suffrages of your brethren to the proud and responsible <coughs> position of a ruler of the craft. And while you may be justified in feeling some degree of personal pride, it may not be improper to remind you that in proportion as this voluntary action on the part of your brethren betokens their confidence in your judgment and integrity, it claims in your hands the most careful, impartial, and conscientious discharge of the duties of your office. You should remember that the brief authority which you're about to exercise springs only from the body of Masonry, and that you owe it to those whose gift it is your utmost efforts to preserve peace, love, and unity among them. Please rise. upon your election as worshipful master of this lodge, mm -hmm. and it will afford me great pleasure to invest you with the authority and the insignia of your office. Previous to your investiture, however, it is necessary that you signify your assent to those ancient charges and regulations which point out the duty of the master of the lodge. The ancient charges this evening will be read by worship brother Robert Prada. Okay. Pass next. You agree to be a good man and true, strictly to obey the moral laws. You agree to be a peaceful citizen and cheerfully to conform to the laws of the country in which you reside. You promise not to be concerned in plots and conspiracies against the government, but patiently to submit to the decisions of the supreme legislation. You agree to pay a proper respect to the civil magistrates, to work diligently, live credibly, and act honorably by all men. You agree to hold in veneration the original rulers and patrons of Freemasonry and the regular successors, supreme and subordinate, according to their stations, and to submit to the awards and resolutions of your brethren when convened in every case consistent with the Constitution of Eternity. You agree to avoid private picks and quarrels and to guard against intemperance and excess. You agree to be cautious in your behavior courteous to your brethren and faithful to your lodge. You promise to respect genuine brethren and to discountenance impostors and all dissenters from the original plan of masonry. You agree to promote the general good of society, to cultivate the social virtues, and to propagate the knowledge of the mystic arts. You promise to pay homage to the Grand Master for the time being and to his officers when duly installed and strictly to conform to every edict of the Grand Lodge or General Assembly of Masons that is not subversive of the principles and groundwork of Masonry. You admit that it is not the power of any man or body of men to make innovations to the body of Masonry. You promise a regular attendance on the committees and communications of the Grand Lodge, on receiving proper notice and to pay attention to all the duties of Masonry on convenient occasions. You admit that no new lodge shall be formed without permission of the Grand Lodge, and that no countenance is to be given to any irregular lodge or to any persons clandestinely initiated therein as being contrary to the ancient charges of Freemasonry. You admit that no person can be regularly made a Mason or admitted to a member of any regular lodge without previous notice and due inquiry into his character. You agree that no visitor shall be received into your lodge without due examination and satisfactory evidence of his having been initiated in a regular lodge. These are the regulations of free and accepted Masons. Do you submit to these charges and promise to support these regulations as Masters have done in all ages before you? I do. Brother Clemente, in consequence of the conformity to the charges and regulations of the fraternity, you are now to be installed master of this lodge with our full confidence in your care and in your skill and capacity to govern the same. Brother Marshall, and like the worshipful master elected east. with the insignia of your 
your own. And the furniture of the lodge and the implements of our profession are placed in the charge. These are emblematical of the true Masonic light and dark, the Holy Bible. The great light maser, which guides us all through, directs our path to the temple of happiness and points out the whole duty of man. The square, which teaches us to regulate our actions and harmonize our conduct with the principles of morality and virtue. The compasses, which teach us to look at our desires at every station, and rise in an eminence by merit, we may live respected and die regretted. The rule, 